Hey, Peter, Anna, it's raining heavily. Come inside. No, Mama, we want to play. And what about a story? Yay! We are coming! Mama, which story are you going to tell? Come, sit with me. I'm going to tell you the story named Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It was the middle of winter. The snow fell softly as a beautiful queen sat sewing by a window. As she gazed out at the wintry scene and watched a blackbird perching on a snow-covered branch, she pricked her finger with her needle. How I wish I had a daughter with skin as white as the snow, lips as red as my blood, and hair as black as a blackbird, she thought. Not long afterwards, the queen did indeed have a pretty baby girl who was just like the one she had wished for. The queen called her daughter Snow White. Sadly, the queen died soon after Snow White was born and Snow White's father, the king, married again. His new queen was very beautiful but vain. Every day she would go to her magic mirror and say, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? And the mirror would reply, You, O oh queen, are the fairest one of all. Then the queen would smile because she knew that the mirror always spoke the truth. The years passed and Snow White grew into a beautiful girl. One day, the queen looked in the magic mirror and said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? And this time the mirror replied, You are fair, O oh queen, it's true, but Snow White is fairer now than you. The queen was so angry and jealous that she decided Snow White must die at once. She sent for her huntsman and told him to take Snow White deep into the forest and kill her. He must then bring back her heart to prove she was dead. The huntsman led Snow White deep into the forest and drew his knife. Snow White fell to her knees and begged him to spare her life. The huntsman was very sad. Like all the royal servants, he loved Snow White, yet he did not dare disobey the Queen. But when he saw Snow White crying, he took pity on her. I cannot kill you, he said, but I cannot take you back either. I will leave you here, but you must promise never to return home. Snow White agreed, so the huntsman left her and returned to the palace. On the way, he killed a deer and cut out its heart. He took this to the queen and pretended it was Snow White's heart. Poor Snow White wandered through the forest, feeling tired, lonely and very hungry. At last she reached a clearing and saw a little house. She tapped on the door and when there was no answer, she went inside. There she saw a long low table laid with seven plates. There were seven little cups, seven little knives and forks bound asleep. Now the cottage was the home of seven dwarfs. Every day they went to a nearby mine and dug for diamonds. When night came, they returned home carrying their shovels, pickaxes and bags of jewels. When they arrived home on this particular night, they saw at once that someone had been in their house 
and eaten some of their food. When they went upstairs, they straight away saw Snow White asleep. Who can this beautiful girl be? They asked each other in amazement. When Snow White woke up, she told them her story. The dwarfs felt so sorry for her that they invited her to stay with them and be their housekeeper. But they warned her that she must never open the door to anyone while they were away at the mine in case the wicked queen found out she was alive and came to kill her. Snow White stayed with the dwarfs. She was very happy looking after them and before long she forgot all about the wicked queen. The queen, meanwhile, believing Snow White to be dead, had not bothered to ask her magic mirror her usual question, but one day, as she stood combing her hair, the queen idly asked her mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? And the mirror promptly replied, You, O oh queen, are fair, it's true. But Snow White is fairer far than you. Deep within the greenwood shade, Snow White with dwarfs her home has made. The queen was furious and realizing that the huntsman had tricked her, she decided to kill Snow White herself. She disguised herself as an old peddler woman and made her way to the dwarf's cottage. There she found Snow White sitting by the window. Would you like to buy a pretty comb for your hair? Asked the queen in her sweetest tone of voice. Snow White quite forgot the dwarf's warning and ran to open the door. The queen showed her a beautiful comb made of tortoise shell and gold. Oh, let me comb your hair offered the queen and she drew the comb through Snow White's long silky hair but the comb had been dipped in deadly poison and when the teeth grazed Snow White's scalp she fell down as if dead the queen ran off laughing cunningly leaving the comb in Snow White's hair when the dwarfs returned from the mine, they found Snow White lying on the ground with the poison comb in her hair. They snatched it out and as they did so, Snow White opened her eyes. When they heard what had happened, they told her that the peddler woman must have been the wicked queen in disguise and begged her again never to open the door to strangers. The queen back at her palace rushed to her mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? When the mirror replied, O oh queen, your poison was in vain, for Snow White is alive again. She was furious. Rushing to the cellar, she disguised herself once more, this time as a country woman with a basket of apples. On the top she placed one juicy apple, half of which she dipped in poison. The queen reached the dwarf's cottage just as Snow White was drawing water from the well. Who will buy my beautiful tasty apples? She called. Snow White, remembering the dwarf's warning, ran inside and locked the door. But then she thought that if she opened the window, nothing will happen. Let me see your apples, she called leaning out of the open window. Taste this one, pretty lady, it's the best, said the queen sweetly, holding out the poisoned apple. Then seeing Snow White hesitate, she cut the apple in half and ate the part she knew had no poison on it. Snow White took the other half and no sooner had she taken a bite than she sank to the floor dead. The queen smiled, sure that this time the poison would work. She rushed home and spoke to her magic mirror again. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? This time the mirror replied, You, O oh queen, you, you are the fairest of them all. The wicked 
queen smiled with satisfaction. When the dwarfs came home and found Snow White dead, they made a glass coffin and laid her in it. They put the coffin amongst the flowers in their garden and kept watch by it day and night. One day it happened that a prince came riding through the forest and he saw the glass coffin in which Snow White lay. She looked so beautiful that he fell in love with her. He asked the dwarfs if he could take the coffin back to his castle. The dwarfs would not allow this, but they agreed to let the prince kiss Snow White. As the prince kissed Snow White, the piece of poisoned apple fell from her lips. Her eyes opened and she saw the handsome prince kneeling over her. She fell in love with him straight away. The dwarfs were overjoyed that she was alive once more and even more delighted when the prince and Snow White agreed to marry. When the queen once again asked the mirror her favorite question, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? It replied, You, O oh queen, are the fair, it's true. But Queen Snow White is fairer still than you. The queen smashed the magic mirror in her rage. The king who had discovered how she had tried to kill his lovely daughter, Snow White, banished her from the land. Snow White said goodbye to the dwarfs and rode away with her handsome prince. They were married and lived happily ever after.
Hi kids! All around us are colors pretty and bright. They light up our world and add beauty to things around us. All the colors of the rainbow make this world a brighter place.
brush your teeth, brush it every day. Make them clean, make them shine, brush it every day. Brush them up, brush them down, brush them round and round. When you wake up early, it's time to brush your teeth and brush them in the night time before you go to sleep. Wash your face, wash your face, wash it every day. Forehead, nose, chin and cheeks, wash it every day. Rub the soap up and down, rub it all around. When you wake up in the morning, it's time to wash your face and wash it in the evening when you finish playing.
in the bed One fell off and bumped his head Mama called the doctor and the doctor said No more babies jumping on the bed Four little babies jumping on the bed One fell off and bumped his head Mama called the doctor and the doctor said No more babies jumping on the bed Three little babies jumping on the bed One fell off and bumped his head Mama called the doctor and the doctor said No more babies jumping on the bed Three little babies jumping on the bed One fell off and bumped his head Mama called the doctor and the doctor said No more babies jumping on the bed One little baby jumping on the bed One fell off and bumped his head Mama called the doctor and the doctor said Put those babies right to bed Upon a time there lived a beautiful girl called Cinderella. She lived with her father, stepmother and two stepsisters. After the death of her father, the wicked mother and her daughters began treating Cinderella like a slave. They made her do all the household chores and never made her feel part of the family. Cinderella used to feel very lonely. One day, a royal messenger announced that a royal ball would take place and all the young ladies were invited. I will wear my red velvet gown, said the eldest stepsister happily. I will wear my green velvet gown, said the youngest stepsister. The day of the ball arrived. The stepmother and her daughters dressed up and went to the ball. Cinderella stood near a window and watched them go. I wish I too could go to the ball, she thought sadly. Suddenly, a fairy godmother appeared before her. Why are you crying, my dear? Do you want to attend the royal ball? She asked kindly. Yes, but how can I go to the ball dressed in rags? Cinderella asked the fairy. Wipe your tears. Bring me a pumpkin, six mice and a rat, said the fairy godmother. At once Cinderella obeyed. 
the fairy godmother touched the pumpkin with her magic wand. Instantly it changed into a beautiful golden coach. Then the fairy godmother turned the mice into six horses and the rat into a coachman. Now all you need is a nice dress, said the fairy godmother. She lightly tapped Cinderella with her wand. Immediately her rags changed into the most beautiful gown she had ever seen. Now Cinderella looked like a princess. As Cinderella sat in the coach, the fairy godmother warned her. Remember, you must return before midnight or the magic will be over. I will, promised Cinderella. Soon Cinderella reached the palace. All the people in the ballroom gazed at her. What a beautiful girl, they whispered. What a beautiful dress, sighed the stepsisters. The prince too was enchanted by Cinderella's beauty. All evening he danced only with her. Suddenly, as the clock began to strike midnight, Cinderella remembered Fairy Godmother's warning. Oh, I must go! I must go! cried Cinderella and ran out. Wait! Wait! Tell me your name! cried the prince and ran after her. But Cinderella was gone. Suddenly, the prince saw something glittering on the stairs. It was one of Cinderella's glass slippers. The prince picked it up. The next day it was announced that the prince would marry the girl whose foot fitted the glass slipper. A minister went from house to house with the glass slipper. When the minister reached Cinderella's house, the two stepsisters eagerly tried the slipper, but it did not fit either of them. It's your turn now, the minister told Cinderella. She is only the servant girl, protested Cinderella's stepmother. She must try too, replied the minister. The slippers fitted Cinderella perfectly. Her stepmother and stepsisters were shocked. Just then, the fairy godmother appeared. And changed Cinderella into a princess. She's the princess from the ball, gasped the stepsisters. Cinderella got married to the prince and they lived happily ever after.
right through Jumping on the bed One fell off and bumped his head 